In this video, I'll show you how to get consistent colors from your camera to your computer. Adorama TV presents Take and Make Great Photography with Gavin Hoey. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that has everything for us photographers. Now, I'll be absolutely honest, if you're looking for an exciting video about lighting, this one isn't it. However, if you're looking for a video about color, about getting color consistency from your eyes to your camera to your computer, then this is essential viewing and it should be. So how do I get my camera to match my computer? Well, I'm actually not going to start with my camera settings. We'll get back to those in a minute. For me, the whole thing about color management begins over at my desk on my computer. Most of this video is all about getting the right color with your camera, but that becomes a pointless exercise if you can't see the right colors on your monitor. I color calibrate my monitor once a month, and I'm using the Data Color Spider 5 Elite as my color calibrating system. Now it comes with its own software, and once a month it reminds me just to pop this on the screen like that, follow the information, it fires a bunch of colors, and I end up with a color corrected monitor. Now that's good because this matches the international color profiles. Yes, there is such a thing, which means that my colors here will look the same in six months time. Anybody who uses a color calibrator will see my images as I see them. That's terrific. But at the end, it also reminds me that this monitor shows 100% of the sRGB color space, which is why I edit in that space, but not all of the Adobe RGB color space. So I don't edit in that space because I can't see all the colors. And that's kind of useful too. To help me with the photos, we brought Brian back into the studio. Now, Brian's going to be the model, and as you can see, he's wearing a white top. We've got a grey background. Behind him, I've also got my painted grey background and the white wall of the studio. Now, if you have no other means of sorting out the colours, you might think that one of these would be perfect for getting a nice neutral grey and correct colours. Well, let's put that to the test. Let's just take a simple picture like this and see how it looks in Photoshop. Okay, Brian, here we go. So I've taken a nice wide shot. It's not exactly exciting, but let's just get this into Photoshop and see if we can get the correct color balance using the gray backgrounds or Brian's white t-shirt. I'm using Adobe Camera Raw inside of Photoshop CC, but you could do this exactly the same with the develop module in Lightroom because the tool I'm going to use is up here, the white balance tool. Now, the reason I was so interested in the greys in this shot is because this tool, what you do is you click on something that you know is a pure grey, doesn't matter whether it's light or dark, it has no other colour contamination. When you click on it, it will remap your white balance and give you the correct colours. Now, it doesn't look too bad as it stands, but if I click on this big grey paper background, that's going to remap my colours, so that grey paper background becomes neutral, and I get a colour that's different. Is that better or right? Well, that's kind of the problem. I do know, however, that my wall, I painted a lovely tone of grey, so let's click on the wall, and I get, well, a sort of warmer tone, I guess. White is a grey, it's just a very, very bright grey, so maybe the white wall. Mm, okay, well, maybe the white wall where it's in shadow. Maybe Brian's t-shirt. This is the trouble. There's no consistency here whatsoever. In isolation, they all look fine. But which one is right? How do I get a consistent gray or white balance from shot to shot, and perhaps more importantly, from shoot to shoot? Well, let's have a look at that. Now, we could do something called a custom white balance right here in camera. If that's the way you like to go, that's great. That's another video for me. I like to take reference images, a known color range, particularly gray, that then I can use in Photoshop or Lightroom to get my colors accurate. Now, there are plenty of ways you could do it. If you want to go to the top end of the scale, something like this color chart is wonderful. In fact, if I just open this and carefully flip it over, trying not to get my fingers on the swatches, you can see it comes with a lovely big gray card as well. And it's this gray that I'm going to use. Now, if that's a little bit expensive for your money, you can spend less and get a similar result. So, spending less is one thing, but spend wisely. This was my very first grey card. As you can see, it's kind of a bendy, foldy thing. Trouble is, the grey wasn't particularly grey. It looks grey, it's not grey. Whoops. 
<laughs> okay, so a little bit more expensive, but a definite gray, a branded product, something like this cube you can rely on to give you a consistent gray. But the thing I use the most is actually this small credit card sized gray card. So how do I use this gray card? Well, let's get a model in and see how this whole gray card thing works. So when I'm in the studio and I need that reliable source of constant gray, my tool of choice is this. It's not my flash meter, it's at what's at the other end. I always keep a simple credit card sized gray card attached to my light meter. Now, I use it really simply. I give it to the model. Here we go, Brian, if you want to hold that. And ask him just to hold the, underneath their chin. That's lovely. Now, I've already metered the light. I know this is going to work. That's terrific. And we have a nice, simple grey card shot that I can then remove. And I can either do that at the beginning of the session, the end of the session, halfway through the session. At some point with this lighting, I'll get a shot of my grey card and then I've got something to use and get the rest of my shots the correct colour. Let's take a few more shots. Okay, that's terrific. Once again, I'm going to do this inside of Photoshop's Camera Raw. Uh, we'll move to Lightroom for the next little bit of white balance, but what I've got is a couple of images here. This is my grey card shot, and this is the shot that I actually want to process. As you can see, they've both got the same settings, same white balance, and so on. Now, to apply the white balance from my grey card, first of all, I need to select all of the images I want to apply this to. That's both of these. So if I come up to the top corner, I can choose Select All, and then they are linked together. That means that if I come and do something like change the, the white balance temperature, you see that both the top and the bottom images change. So once again, it's a matter of getting that white balance tool, but this time, rather than clicking on the, the gray background, I'm gonna click on the gray card. I know that's a lovely gray. I know it's gonna be the same gray every single shot, every single shoot, and that means that they're linked together. So this ends up, of course, the right white balance, as does this shot as well. Just to show you, that's what I recorded and that is the subtle difference, but a definite improvement in the white balance and a consistent white balance as well. In my camera, I've set the white balance to electronic flash, and that should mean I get a nice consistent color. I don't use auto white balance because that will give me the white balance of the room lights, not flash. Now, if you think, well, if it's on electronic flash, why do I need to bother with the white balance? I mean, I'm in a studio, I'm not on location, so there aren't any red walls to influence the color of light. There's no changing of day to influence the color of light. Well, it's because not all flashes produce exactly the same color of light. Some might be warmer, some might be colder. As the flash ages, its color might change. So if you set your camera up a year ago to do one flash, then a year later, it can be slightly different. But just doing things like taking a bare light and putting it into a softbox, that can have a difference to the color of light too. Even something as simple as changing power on some lights can change the color. Maximum power might be a slightly different tone to minimum power. A gray card is a great way to check these things out. And if you do a few gray card shots as you move your lights around during the session, you should get some lovely consistency throughout. If color accuracy is what you're aiming for and nothing but perfect will do, maybe you're doing product photography or fashion where the colors of the clothes absolutely matter, you need to get yourself one of these. It's not a tablet. It is in fact a spider checker. Now this looks like it's a bunch of makeup swatches. It's not, it's actual color swatches and with a bit of software in the computer, we can get a perfect color balance match. Now to use it, open it up and give it to your model. So Brian, if you want to hold that for me. Now a couple of things are important, whether it's this from Data Color or a different one from a different brand, a few things you need to do, make sure that the model's fingers, if they're holding it, aren't covering any of the color swatches. That's really important. Make sure it's in the lighting that you're going to be using. That's important. And make sure you get a shot. So let's actually take a photograph. Now the photograph I'm going to take isn't the close-up. You might think you only want to do a close-up of this, but it's actually a wide shot that I can then crop down in the computer and apply a little bit of simple software to analyze the color swatches, create a color profile that then I can apply to other shots taken in exactly the same lighting and guarantee myself perfect white balance shot after shot after shot. 
Hopefully the advice in this video has put you on the right direction for great color control in your photographs. But of course, there are things that can happen outside of your control. For example, if you make videos and upload them to YouTube, that can do some really weird stuff to your colors. So for YouTube, what I've done is I've got my color chart so they don't mess up the color in this video. Okay, so here we go. Ta -da. And of course, if you're an Adorama TV viewer, you need to be clicking on the subscribe button. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching. Subscribe.